DJI has finally released the firmware that unlocks backwards compatibility between the new Goggles 2 and the older generation of video transmitters like the Caddx Vista, the DJI Air Unit, and so forth. And when they promised they were going to do that, I said I was going to reserve judgment because quite often when DJI delivers on their promises, they give us what they said they were going to give us, but they don't always give us what we imagined we would get when they said that they were going to give it to us. And that is true of this release as well. I'm going to take you through all the ins and outs, including how to update if you want to and why you might not want to. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. I'm not going to make you wait for the meat of the video. What you really need to know about this firmware update is how it affects compatibility between the different goggles and the Vista and that generation of video transmitters. I'm just going to say the Vista video transmitter going forward, but it refers to the Caddx Vista, the Runcam Link, the original DJI Air Unit, and all every, basically every FPV video transmitter except the O3 Air Unit but I'm just going to say Vista going forward because that's just mostly what I have. And I think when DJI said they were going to give us this backwards compatibility firmware, what a lot of people, certainly what I imagined they were going to do was turn on a digital FPV system mode for the Goggles 2 that would let them bind to the Vista and then everything else would continue to work sort of as it always had. And that is not what they have done. Take a look at this table. So the firmware version for the Goggles 2 that unlocks backwards compatibility with the Vista generation of video transmitters is firmware 01030000. And when you put that firmware on the Goggles 2, you also must put firmware 01.01.0000 on your video transmitter. And you can see the difference between these two systems in this chart. Before you do the update, everything is sort of as it is today. The Vista generation of video transmitters cannot bind to the Goggles 2. They can bind to the V2 Goggles. They can bind to the V1 Goggles. And they can bind to the black FPV controller V1. They cannot bind to the gray FPV controller V2. Meanwhile, the O3 air unit can bind to both the Goggles 2 and the V2 Goggles, but not the V1 Goggles not the FPV controller V1 and can bind to the gray FPV controller V2. So in fact, we could kind of draw a distinction between like an older generation, which is the black FPV controller V1, the V1 goggles, and the newer generation, which is the O3 air unit and the goggles 2. And then we've kind of got the Vista video transmitter and the V2 goggles straddling that line. And basically what this new firmware does is it pushes them firmly over to the other side of that line, S sort of. After updating the Goggles 2 to firmware 0103 and updating the Vista to firmware 0101, the compatibility changes as follows. First of all, nothing changes for the O3 air unit. Everything there is as it was. What changes is the compatibility between the Vista, the Goggles 2, and the V2 goggles. So now the Vista is compatible with the Goggles 2. Yay, if you have the Goggles 2, you can now bind to all of your older quads with the Vista air unit, etc., and you can bind to your newer quads with the O3 air unit. This is where you want to be if you own the Goggles 2 and you exclusively use the Goggles 2. This is sort of unequivocally a good thing for people just getting into this system and who have started with the Goggles 2. But for people who own the V2 Goggles and for people who own the black v FPV controller V1, the picture is not as clear cut because the new firmware removes compatibility with the V2 Goggles entirely. Yes, if you choose to bind your Vista video transmitter to your Goggles 2, then the firmware update that lets you do that prevents you from binding to your V2 goggles. So if you had both sets of goggles and for some reason you were like, oh, I'm going to bind this quad to this goggles and then that quad to that goggles, you couldn't do that. Well, you could. You can flash the firmware. You can roll it back. And so you could roll back the firmware on your Vista to the older version before 0101 and then you could bind it to your V2 goggles. It's no problem. So DJI hasn't locked out that capability, but 
I at least imagined that I would be able to sort of go back and forth, the same as you can with the O3 air unit. You can just bind it back and forth between the V2 goggles and the, O3, uh, the goggles too, and it doesn't matter, and they haven't done that. Or concerning the controllers, things are similar uh, in that putting the new firmware on your Vista means you can no longer bind to the V1 FPV controller. You can only bind to the V2 controller. So if you happen to be a person who for some reason has the Goggles 2 and a V1 controller, you are out of luck. You cannot use the Goggles 2 with the V1 Black controller. You can only use it with the V2 controller, but they have unlocked compatibility with the V2 controller for the Vista, etc. with that new firmware. So we can kind of see that what this new firmware update does is bring the Vista air unit generation of video transmitters sort of forward into the Goggles 2 03 air unit generation, but it breaking backwards compatibility with the V2 goggles, at least unless you roll back the firmware. Oh, and by the way, V1 goggles, you're just not even in the picture here. If you have the new firmware, the V1 goggles can't bind to the Vista either. You would have to roll back to the older firmware. And, and what DJI has done is not as capricious as it might seem. They had a good reason for doing this. Because if you go watch Madstech's video about this release, he has done a ton of RF testing on these firmwares. And what he's discovered is that this new firmware makes the Vista generation of video transmitters act more like, well, almost exactly like the O3 air unit. That means that they are using the same different more sophisticated, better? We don't know, there's still more testing to do. They're using the same different form of RF modulation. It means also that you don't have the ability to adjust the power output. Just like with the O3 air unit, this new firmware means that the V2 uh, video transmitter's power output is not adjustable. But good news, many of the things that we've come to rely on still function in this sort of new paradigm. For example, the ham config hack that works on the O3 air unit works the same on the Vista if it has been, uh, if you've upgraded it to this 01.01 .01 firmware. I'm also happy to report that routing is not affected. If you have rooted systems with WTFOS on them, updating the firmware may remove WTFOS, it often does, but you can just reinstall it and get back to going. It does not uh, remove the root if the root has already been done, and I don't know whether it can be rooted or not, but I would assume that it can't because often that's the case, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Suffice it to say, if you are at all interested in rooting your goggles and rooting your air units and installing WTFOS on them, then you absolutely should do that before you update the firmware of any DJI device, because updating to a later firmware without rooting will often, almost always, lock out the ability to root. And if you're not sure what rooting is, or what WTFO is and why you might want it, I've got a link in the video description of my video about that. You absolutely should check it out. Maybe you don't care and don't want it, but if you do want it, you're gonna be very, very sad if you miss out on it. One more thing needs to be said about this release, and that is that if you have an original air unit with an SD card on board, that does not work in this new firmware. So if that's a killer feature for you that you absolutely rely on, you will not be able to use the original air unit with its onboard recording with the goggles too. You can use it, just the onboard recording doesn't work yet. Maybe they'll add it, maybe they won't. Basically, it seems to turn that original air unit into a Vista. Okay, if knowing all that, you've decided that you want to upgrade and use this system, here's how. And the first thing you need to know is that there are two different versions of the software that's used to update the firmware on the DJI system. And this whole process of releasing the Avada drone and releasing the O3 air unit has shifted the V2 goggles, certainly, from one to the other. The DJI Assistant FPV series is the one that V2 goggle owners are used to using. Uh, the DJI Assistant Consumer Drone series is the one that Goggles 2 users are used to using. And the thing to take from this is that it seems like the whole ecosystem is shifting over to the consumer drone side. So, uh, 
What I would suggest you do is that whatever you're trying to update, whether it's the Goggles 2, a Vista, or the uh, V2 Goggles, that you plug them into the Consumer Drone Series app and see if they show up and if it offers you a firmware to update there. And if so, it means that it can go ahead and update the firmware for all of these things. With the V2 Goggles, you may need to shift the goggles out of the digital FPV system mode that binds to the Vista, the air unit, and so forth, and shift them over to, well, I would say shift them over to the O3 air unit mode, but if you're on an old enough firmware, you won't even have that. So shift them over to the DJI FPV drone mode, up, uh, update them in the FPV series assistant, and then once you've updated them to the latest that's available there, they should also be uh, functioning in the consumer drone series app, and at that point, it just seems like it's easier to put everything in Consumer Drone Series, although the FPV Series app seems to continue to work. Uh, but why keep two apps if you could only have one? The same seems to be true for the Vista and the other video transmitters. If they have an older firmware, then they're only going to show up in the FPV Series. But then if they have a newer firmware, they may start to show up in the Consumer Drone Series. So uh, update them in the FPV and then see if they appear over in Consumer Drones and go forward from there. Once you've updated the firmware, it's a little unintuitive to many people that you have to switch modes in the goggles to bind them to different devices. You don't just bind the goggles to an O3 air unit of a Nevada and a Vista video transmitter all at the same time. In the V2 goggles, go to Settings, Device, and then you can see the options here to switch modes. There are four modes that the goggles can be in. They are O3 air unit, Avada drone, DJI FPV drone, and what they call the digital FPV system. That's the Vista and so forth. You can only bind when in that mode and you need to switch modes based on which device you're trying to use. For the Goggles 2, you switch modes by going to status and then here at the top there is a switch option that lets you switch between the available modes. Earlier in the video, I said that this firmware update basically turns the Vista generation of video transmitters into an O3 air unit light. Uh, they, they, behave, they behave like the O3 air unit in terms of their RF output. I think we can assume that they're not going to have the exact same performance as the O3 air unit because they don't have the advanced heat dissipation design of the O3 air unit and just if you could get the same performance as an O3 air unit from a Vista then you why would you buy an O3? But they do behave like the O3 air unit, and that means that some of the features that an O3 lacks, you will lose if you go forward with this firmware update. One of them that I mentioned previously is the ability to change the output power. You can no longer manually change the output power, although you can change the channels as before if you do the ham config unlock uh, that has been discussed elsewhere. I'll put a link down in the video description to Matt's Tech's video about it if you don't know about that. Another feature that's going to disappear is the ability to change the camera orientation. So you know how with the V2 goggles, if you accidentally install your camera upside down in your drone, then you can just go into the menu and flip it over 180 and not have to take your drone apart. The O3 can't do that, and if you do this for a more update, the Vista can't do that. One awesome feature that did get added is full support for Betaflight MSP DisplayPort. Uh, people are calling it Canvas Mode, and I used to call it Canvas Mode too, until Dominic Clifton, the CleanFlight developer, pointed out that Canvas Mode and MSP DisplayPort are actually two different things, and so I've been calling it MSP DisplayPort going forward. But DJI and a lot of people call it Canvas Mode, probably in no small part, because I used to call it Canvas Mode, so oops. But now, with this new firmware update, the Vista generation of video transmitters get full support for the Betaflight OSD. Yay, um, that is the Betaflight OSD. iNav, sorry. Nope, doesn't work with iNav. And it does work with RGPilot because RGPilot has invented a Betaflight compatibility mode specifically to solve this problem, which is better than nothing, I guess. Mm, I thought of one more thing. One more thing that's going to really matter. The O3 air unit does not go to full power unless it is connected to a flight controller and the flight controller is armed. And that's true even if you turn the low power temperature protection mode off, which means that if you want to use this, this video transmitter inside a wing without a flight controller or on a ground vehicle without a flight controller, it's true for the O3 air unit that you will not get max output power at all 
and that is presumably also true if you were to update the Vista to this new firmware. So where does this update actually leave us? Well, if you've got the Goggles 2, then this is pretty much just a good thing for you. If you've got the DJI FPV Controller V2, the gray one, and that's what you like to use, this is pretty much only a good thing for you because basically you have access to a whole other line of hardware of video transmitters that you can now use your equipment with. If you've got um, the V2 goggles, then this also kind of doesn't affect you very much either because you can just not do this firmware update keep using your V2 goggles with your Vistas and so forth, keep using your V2 goggles with the O3 air unit if you prefer, and you're also good. This really only kind of screws over people who were hoping that this firmware update would allow them to continue to use both the goggles 2 and the V2 goggles, or both the V1 black FPV controller and the gray FPV controller, with a sort of mixture of hardware without having to flash firmware in between. And I suppose that for a YouTube creator like me, that's exactly who I am. It's super annoying to me that I can't easily bind a video transmitter to one set of goggles and then immediately bind it to another set of goggles for a different test, but I suppose I'm probably in the minority. Well, I'm sure there's other people out there who are super annoyed at the exact specifics of this outcome, but I, it's kind of what I expected. Whenever DJI promises you, I'm bringing a cake to your birthday, and you imagine the most delicious fluffy cake of your favorite flavor, and DJI brings it, and sure enough, the frosting is exactly what you wanted, and the inside is creamy and delicious, and then suddenly there's pudding in it, or there's sprinkles on it, and you're like, I don't like sprinkles, DJI. Why'd you put licorice on it, DJI? And he says, look, I made you the exact cake you asked for. Why are you looking at me like that? And that's kind of what we got here, too. Now, the real question you may be asking here is, is DJI still the king of FPV video links? Well, that's how I titled my video, where I compared DJI, including the V2 goggles and the O3 air unit and the goggles, too, to Walksnail. Walksnail firmware has been getting better and better, and people are wondering, is Walksnail a viable alternative to DJI, or is it still second fiddle? I'll put a card on screen, and you can check out my video where I flew them all and gave you the footage to look at, I gave you my conclusions. I think you'll find it pretty interesting. See you there.